Hey, gonna do a quick video here uh, to find out if our laser process is bringing um, unalloyed iron to the surface. Uh, so when we do our deep engraving on 316L parts, uh, obviously there's iron alloyed in the 316. Um, and we wanna find out if something about that process is leaving a thin layer of unalloyed iron in the marked area. Uh, that could essentially rust uh, when it comes in contact with salt water and uh, show up as surface contamination. So um, this is the end of a bar uh, straight out of the lathe. So it's the same material uh, that we ran all of the current series of crowns. They're all 316L, the new crown, the knurled one. Um, so I wanna use the exact same piece of material. Um, I already ran the exact same laser program that we use on the crown itself. So absolutely identical. Um, and now what I'm gonna do is actually mix up some fake seawater, roughly 35 grams of salt. And then we're gonna add a thousand grams or add water until we reach a thousand grams. And that will approximate the concentration of the ocean. Okay, so I've had this soaking for, I don't know, 45 minutes or so now. Um, I obviously put my watch in there. Hey, good news, it's waterproof. <laughs> um, right now I don't see any discoloration at all. So on the crown, um, so what we're looking at specifically is the engraving, the deep engraving on that crown surface. So this crown is one of the new series crowns that I fitted to my watch. This is a Mark I Omni Diver, but I fitted that crown and it was made from the same rod of material as all of the others. So that's a good first test, uh, but we're gonna let, need to let this dry, let it oxidize and see if there's a you know reaction happening as it dries. So I'm just gonna set it right here, rod blank as well. That's been in there. Now I don't see any Kind of hard to see, sorry, it's not really focusing super well. Um, I don't see anything on that either yet. Looks super clean, uh, but again, I'm gonna let this dry. All right, so let's check in on the science experiment. These have been sitting long enough to dry. I don't see really any indication at all of rust color. I don't really see anything on my watch either. Um, now that crown came from that same bar of material, so that's not surprising. So I'm actually gonna raise this concentration to 50 parts per thousand, which is hypersaline. So that would be like, you know, a, a salt lake, for example, uh, where you have a much higher concentration. So uh, we're gonna measure out some more salt. We need another 15 grams or so. Dump it in. It's gonna be a little bit harder. Uh, just get back from the microwave and we got this fully dissolved. So, test piece is going back in, and the watch going in whoop, as well. Get in there. Okay, so it's been about two hours. Uh, it's in the 50 parts per thousand solution now. So you guys are seeing this as I'm seeing this for the first time. Pulling this out. <laughs> watch is still waterproof. That's always a good sign. All right, so I'm not seeing any Corrosion. I don't want to wipe the water off of this because I actually want it to sit there in the air and evaporate. Again, this is an actual bar remnant, 316L, uh, exactly as it came out of the lathe. I faced it and laser engraved it this morning using the exact same program that we used to do the crowns. So you can see on that, not seeing any type of rust or discoloration. Looks like this stuff has had a chance to dry, so let's take a look. We'll start with the watch. Um, you can actually see the salt residue on the bezel, like right there. So pretty salty, 50 parts per thousand is um, it's pretty salty, but um, I don't see any rust or discoloration that would lead me to believe there's a large amount of iron on this. Um, okay, and this is the, the bar end. Again, you can see white salt residue all over the edges. Uh, but I'm not seeing any rust indication, so. Okay, so I have one more test we can do for free iron. Um, I re-engraved this, faced it off, re-engraved it, 
Um, I have some copper sulfate here. It's usually used to test passivation. Uh, we were passivating some 440C stainless. So I'm just gonna put a drop right on the top and that'll accelerate uh, the rusting process of free iron. So if there is any free iron on that top surface right now, uh, that copper sulfate will force it to rust very quickly. I don't see any reaction, uh, but I'm gonna let it sit for a little bit and we'll come back to it. Hey guys, so 620 here in Tucson. I've had the copper sulfate uh, sitting on top of this piece of 316L to see if we could force it to rust in the deep engraved area. Uh, we were trying to test for free iron or unalloyed iron that may have deposited as a result of the deep engraving and I don't see any evidence at all of that happening.